I'll tell them how it's done. You tell them how it's done. This is the exhaust. I'll be back. So. <laughs> Come and give me some drink. Well, I'll start with the intake. So the intake is basically going to take air from outside of the van, intake it into the heater, and then the heater's obviously going to heat it, and then... <laughs> Are you laughing at me? All that's wrong. So <laughs> that's wrong? That's all wrong. <laughs> oh, gosh. I tried. I tried. <laughs> We are Jared and Ashley, and we're currently in the process of self-converting our Mercedes Sprinter into a full-on off-grid camper van. This week consisted of lots of dancing, <laughs> lots of trips to Home Depot. We got that quality Home Depot content. It's got that QHD, dog. <laughs> and even more of Jared teaching me all things electrical. Yeah, you're getting learned. Getting you a lesson today, boy. You got three eighths. I need to get a two and five eighths. Two and five eighths. Hello! Oh my gosh, I'm as white as a ghost. This is our SRD2 heater kit. So, no, we did not buy all of this from Home Depot, but this is what we're installing today. So, we had to go and grab a couple extra parts that wasn't included in this kit. All of what you see here came with the SVAR kit. This is the actual heater. This is what is going to heat our van. So it uses the fuel from our diesel tank in order to heat the van. So this is the route we decided to go. We were torn on a couple different options, but this, yes, it was the most expensive, but we felt it was gonna be the most reliable. So we went with it. Um, a lot of the stuff here, I don't know exactly what it is. We have some mounting brackets, some zip ties, some nuts and bolts. We have the um, pump that actually draws the fuel from the diesel tank to the heater. We have the um, exhaust as well as the intake and got a little muffler. Um, this is the fuel line. So obviously we're installing ours under our passenger seat. Okay, we basically set the SVAR here. You saw us do that and we traced out the holes this is just a closer up look so you can see the holes. So this will be the intake, this will be the exhaust, this will be the fuel line. And these four on the outside will just be mounting screws. All right, here's what we had to buy from Home Depot. Flex tubing. This is going to go over top of the fuel line because the fuel line is going to be close to a lot of really hot things and we just want to give it some extra protection. Is that right? That's right. Yay! The hole saw. That's a hole saw. So we can drill these. This one's the bigger one. So this is actually going to drill a hole right here so the heat can exit through the back of this um, seat box. And oh, wait, no, that one's the smaller one. That one's going to drill these two holes right here. This one's the big one. It's going to drill right there so the heat can come through here. Right? You're teaching me things. Yeah, you're getting learned. Getting you a lesson today, boy. More holes, got more holes in the van. All right, all holes are in. We are about to fit in the S bar to make sure it fits before we go through and <laughs> trimmel down the edges <laughs> and paint it so it doesn't ooh, rust. Ooh, ooh, don't let it rust. Oh, Fingers man. crossed this fits. Yeah, for real. This thing. <laughs> Clunky. Please fit. Ooh! Right. Almost like a glove. We gotta go look at the underside and make sure it's right. I think this looks great. There's a little bit of extra play around those intake and outtakes, but intake and exhaust, but I think that's fine. You're trying to tell me she's painting? And those clothes, with no protection against that door? Hmm. Well, guys, we're about to turn this into a graffiti project. <sighs> you have no <laughs> confidence in me whatsoever. <laughs> what? How much paint are you putting on there? Well, I'm making sure it ain't gonna rust. Well, I hear you. All right, well, we'll paint those holes, let that dry, and then we'll start fitting up all so the 
all the diesel lines and then we also need to figure out how to route the electrical up through this pillar up over across the door because down through this channel our battery bank is going to go right around that wheel well right there so we're going to figure out how to route all this cabling and hide it so it looks real nice and pretty so now that these holes are in and the paint has dried i'm going to go under and screw in this heater so let's go installed the fuel pump right there and you can see the thicker side is going directly from our diesel fuel tank and that smaller side is mounted and threaded it all the way around to connect to the S bar D2 here which is over there. S bar D2! Sounds like a transformer. <laughs> so yeah that's kind of what we're doing. We still have to do the exhaust, the intake, and all the electrical work so. Ooh. I feel like you're only about a third of the way done then. <laughs> and we don't have very long. We have two hours to work on this until we have to leave to meet some friends for dinner, so. Hurry up. Better hurry up. This whole saw bit that we bought doesn't fit the chuck that the other one came with. So my thought process here is put this down in here and use this one still, right? So screw, screw them together like this. I don't think that's how this stuff is designed, but. Gotta do what you gotta do. Sometimes. All right, so all of this is installed. This is now gonna go here to blow the air, the hot air out. So we're about to drill a hole right here. We just installed the trim piece that actually allows the heat to come through the bottom of the seat, which will look like that, but on the passenger side. So now... So now I'm going to take all these harnesses. There's a power harness, there's a thermostat high altitude, remote temperature sensor harness. I'm going to run all those harnesses from under this box, through the floor, up the B pillar, and then up and across and we're going to put our batteries and all right. of our electronics above that wheel well. So I'm going to kind of run them up, hide them, make sure they're protected from all the metal and down. Send it. We've hit a problem. We've hit a little snag. So in installing the S bar and trying to bring all the wires back to the back of the van where our battery bank will be. Um, the wires aren't long enough, so we're about to go to Home Depot, get some extra wires. It's gonna be a little process because the s d 2 heater wires are a lot thicker, the temperature gauge wires are a lot smaller, so we'll see how this goes. What did you see? We got that quality Home Depot content. It's got that QHD, dog. <laughs> <laughs> quality HD content. This thing's quite a manual process. You, you've got to crimp these small 
clips onto each wire and then slide them through this plastic housing and create your own electrical connector. All right, if you haven't gathered, I've just had to let Jared take over on this because me and electrical don't really mix, so. Who is electrical? I need to talk to him. I should be worried. He's a turd. Uh, so because they don't like to do plug and play electrical components with these kits, I have had to wire up these tiny little gizmos, these little things, which are fuse holders, and these other little inner clip electronics, and I wired them all together, and so now I'm just checking to make sure that I haven't screwed something up, and right now it looks like I have certainly screwed something up. So that's great. Can't get this wire to show connectivity. Oh yeah! We're almost done. Stella is freaking out about this woodpecker. <laughs> Stella, do you see a bird? Do you see a bird, baby? Oh, the thermos reading. It's got something on it. In. It says it's 11 degrees in here. Oh, I heard it click. It's still not hot. It won't blow hot air. No. And that's normal? I mean, it's got a long fuel line it's got to try to prime. And I don't think it pumps very fast. Give it a rip. Let's try it again. It's getting warm! It's getting warm! Yes! It's getting warm! It's not hot, it's warm. It's heating up. We did it. We have heat. What is it? Dude. We did it! Ow, ow, ow! Yes! Now we can actually go sleep in the van, take it for a trip. We won't freeze. We don't have insulation, but it doesn't matter because we have heat. Oh, well, I mean, obviously we have heat in the van when the, the van is running, but you don't have to run the van to run this heat. Yes. Okay, so we just wrapped up the heater, obviously. We are also installing a swivel seat. We Go. went with the Scopima. I think that's how you pronounce it. Scopima, Scopima swivel seat for the passenger side Mercedes Sprinter. Um, it's that like 35 pounds, pounds but, um, and it was a little bit on the pricier side, but it's super low profile and it only adds about an inch and a half to the height of the passenger seat, which is really what we wanted. So yeah, we I, I, I would really value height and the diameter of the swivel is another thing I've seen cause a lot of folks problems yeah. because you've got a lot of these electrical connections, which we have heated seats. So you got a little extra there, but um, the other holes are tiny. So when you go to rotate the seat, it'll pinch these wires. And sometimes you have to cut the wires just to get the thing installed, which to yeah. me, it seems a little bit hokey so yeah rather, our diameter is pretty wide so it's like a solid two i think it's inch. better to spend a little bit more money on the things that are going to be utilized a lot which this will see will be utilized <laughs> like a you lot. sitting in your seat every day yeah. so i can justify it
Okay, so the issue we're having right now with this swivel seat is there is not enough clearance right here on this trim piece. So we're gonna have to go in with a Dremel tool and cut off about three inches of this trim skirt in order to allow the seat to swivel. So he's gonna go get a Dremel tool and that's what we're about to do right now. Now that we finally have some daylight, I figured I'd show you our new baby. We have a swivel seat. It's actually kind of hard to spin around because we're literally sitting on an incline like this. But once we get on flat ground, it's like easy peasy, flip the switch, spin it around. So here you can see the trim that we had to cut. It's like barely, we like sanded it down. You really can't tell, but now it gives this lever a little bit of space to be able to move up and down, so. And that does it. Just in one weekend, we got the SBAR D2 heater in and we got the solar seat in. So making lots of progress. I know we have some stuff this week being delivered, so we'll have some nice projects this weekend to work on. I think next week we're bringing you guys a Q and A, so stay tuned. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow us along on Instagram at WeTakeTheVan. We'll see you guys next week.